All right, let's dig into uh, <laughs> Amazing Atheist D Trans Prager Use Vile New Movie. I haven't seen the movie, by the way, but I'm just very up and up on the trans issue, so I probably don't need to see it to know that this guy's lying through his teeth about most of the things he's about to say. We're now going to watch. Oh, let me turn this back up. Watch the trailer for the feature D Trans from our good friends at Prager University, the most respected academic institution on the face of this earth. I always just felt like there was just something wrong with me, and I was trying to figure it out, and I used the internet to help me do that. Seemingly out of nowhere, we've suddenly seen a huge spike in media depictions and social media depictions of transgenderism. Shame. Such a shame. These people literally believe, based on like an internet search, like young people, like teenagers and young people, who just like... Oh, oh, is he about to dis... Is he about to say that the social contagion aspect isn't a thing? Is, is he about to make the claim that young people aren't being indoctrinated into the trans cult? He's about to make that claim. Do a Google search for transgender and just go like, yeah, I think I'll give that a shot. That doesn't seem... Yeah, they do. You know how we know? Because there's several dozen very vocal detransitioners who said that's exactly what happened to them. You lying scumbag. See, see, Panda, this is, this is why, this is why I had a ban on watching this guy's content here on the stream for so long. Because he literally just lies. Verifiably. Easily. Like, we know for a fact he's lying. Like, half of the most public detransitioners that regularly get featured in articles and get interviewed by conservative talk show hosts and whatever, half of them at least are like, yeah, I was groomed into it online after I began looking at more uh, TRA content. Like, it's not up for debate, amazing atheist. We know for a fact this is how it happens. God, I just want to... Seem like some sort of very intense lifelong commitment, you know, or anything like that. I'll just casually jump aboard that bandwagon with the greatest of ease, right? In the process, I will. Oh, oh, while simultaneously, while simultaneously engaging in the multi layered cognitive dissonance that kids. <laughs> Oh my god, there is so much to unpack there. He just mocked the idea that kids would recklessly jump into something without thinking about it. But that's exactly what kids are known to do. Also, he advocates for kids being able to transition. Also, you would think, based on what he just said, that kids don't recklessly jump into things but again that's what they're known to do it, like <sighs> this guy yeah. is so dumb i i you know when someone is so dumb it's actually hard to dissect what they said because of how stupid it was it's like <laughs> How dare you be so stupid you make me squirt this way? I didn't understand. Right! <sighs> the trans thing is dumb. 1% regret transitioning. Can we stop the culture war and make America great again? 1% uh, regret transitioning? No, 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 no. Like, the overwhelming majority of kids now are beginning to regret transition like watch in like i don't know 10 years about you're gonna have data that says like yeah like 70 percent of kids that transitioned as kids regret it now and i don't know where the hell you're getting that one percent thing from because 
when left to their own devices, 86% of kids will just naturally desist of gender dysphoria. But many of those kids that would have desisted naturally are now being groomed into it by the internet pipeline that this guy just claimed doesn't exist. I have no idea where you're getting that 1% stat, dude. I want you, fuck you, I couldn't have said it better myself, Alathot. Uh, alienate my family. I'll threaten every friendship that I have. I'll threaten every friendship that I have, yeah, except for the friends that are peer pressuring me into saying I'm trans because it's a social contagion. Again, just another verifiable bold-faced lie. I will give up the a feeling of like safety when I go into public. I'll do all of that. Did he just say I'll give up the feeling of safety in public? Safety when I I will give up the feeling of like safety when I go into public. Ah, uh, just re and there just another lie. I'll give up the feeling of safety in public. Bro, trans people are the most ultra protected class that has ever existed in a first world country. These people have social privileges that kings of old would have only dreamed of. Like, no, you're just lying. Again. I'll do all of that on a fucking lark, man. Cause I, it looked good in a goddamn Google search. And I like that trans person I saw in that YouTube. Throw a monkey wrench into the gears of my life and become trans. It's even reached the mainstream advertising world. The people who are consuming this are children, 13, 14, 15 years old. And it's so easy for them to literally be groomed. I just woke up one day, looked at myself in the mirror, and asked myself, what the heck am I doing? What when trans-identified kids are ref Oh, that's hot. God. The temperature of the sun. Um, I'm always happy to give my sources UTV, and I've given them in this stream multiple times. The roving fucking squads of people out there just like, we need to get as many kids trans as we possibly goddamn can, you guys. Uh, evil overlord. Evil overlord. Yes, you in the back. Why? You're the forces of evil. Your plan is make every... That's, that's literally... So now... Go ahead. But that, that's literally basically the, um, the meeting that was had at that Nashville hospital. Exactly. Exactly where I was going. Oh, yeah. There aren't people who are literally... Con who have a concerted, vested interest in making as many kids trans as possible. You know, there isn't a huge pharmaceutical industrial complex that wants to turn these kids into permanent patients so that they have that sweet, sweet cha-ching. Big Pharma would never profit off the suffering of humans. Again, a verifiable lie. We've seen video clips of people talking about how it's an industrial complex. We know for a fact that people deliberately groom kids into being trans so that they can make the cha-ching. There's also the political points. There's also the social credit, yada, yada, yada. There's a lot of reasons people do it. We will look at this after. Everybody trans. What's the motive? What does that accomplish? What Money. Money. What is the end game? Also votes there never really hear that articulated do we just like nebulous stuff but like <laughs> we never hear it articulated it's this this and this we never hear it articulated it i just told you never ever ever it's never been said the enemy doesn't have a thing they just made it up i literally am telling you nah, 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 nah. that that's the level of this guy's thinking you know confu moral confusion predatory Vague, vague, vague. Like, we never get to hear, like, what's the actual plan here? Like, the, if the, the Illuminati or whoever's doing it, like, what's the scheme? The whole world yeah. goes trans. Hmm? 
Oh, well, what Airshot said. Mm. Fans, now what? <laughs> like. Huh? Referred to specialized gender clinics. They're often told that they're going to get comprehensive. Mul Is it shapeshifter? Panda makes a good point there, actually. Yeah, even if it wasn't, even if there wasn't the financial motive. Ideology, I all, blah, blah, blah. ideologies often self incentivize, they self propagate. That's one of the markers of whether or not an ideology, you know, exists in the world we're in today. Well, someone tried to start this ideology. Did it have the ability to self propagate? Christianity self propagates, Islam self propagates, etc. Marxism, the gender cult. It doesn't self-propagate, it steals other people's kids to propagate, but you get the point. Multidisciplinary yeah. mental How much left on this video? About nine minutes. Health assessments. We know that that's not true. I know so many fucking trans people. This idea that you can just like cavalierly make this decision and the medical establishment is just like rolls out the red carpet and says, come right, yeah, come right through. We don't care, we won't ask any questions, you just do whatever you want. That's totally a, like a bogus assessment. That's totally a bogus assessment. Okay, yeah, that's why there's like thousands of TikToks of young women who said they were trans like three months ago and they take a video of themselves walking out of the hospital with their uterus in a jar because it's a bogus assessment, right? Because I saw a video of a young girl walking out talking about, these are my ovaries. I'm so glad these are out of me. God. Like, yeah, and she said, and she came out as trans like that year. Yeah, it's a bogus assessment, right? Or Stop lying. Um, or Chloe Cole talking about how it was not difficult at all. Right. Or, um, what's her name? Um, oh... I can see her face. She's got dark hair with a kind of a um, she kind of a rogue from X Men hairdo. Um, uh, she does some conservative content. She did an interview with um, a friend of her family. Talking about Lauren Southern. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah. did an interview with Chloe Cole. Well, she did a interview with Chloe Cole, but she also did an interview with another person whose name was actually Rachel, and this person started transitioning, and because um, I remember we were watching the video, she was crying about the fact that her voice will never sound the same ever again. And she talked about how she watched videos of herself previously and just cried at the fact that she's not ever going to sound like a woman ever, ever again. And nobody tried to stop her. Right. All right. I don't want this YouTube video to be like forever long. So we're just going to rapid fire, start going through this BS. Of how being trans works. Now, not all trans people go through the medical system, of course. Some trans people transition without medical intervention whatsoever. And obviously... They're free to do what they want because that's freedom of expression, freedom yep. of speech, yes. whatever. For those exactly. who go through the medical system, they're going to be asked questions. They're going to be evaluated by uh, psychiatric professionals. So you feel like you're a boy? Yeah, okay. Here's a prescription for testosterone. Come back in three weeks. I'll write you one for blockers. That's the evaluation. Right. Try again. Liar. It's not just going to be like, okay, here you go. Here's your fucking big... 60 gallon drum of estrogen go ahead have yourself an estrogen smoothie every morning until you grow tits was ruined. who's there for their detransitioning nobody nobody would help me because they had more concerns of me reversing everything did this thing to alleviate this gender dysphoria yeah. that wasn't there before but you made it into a problem and now oh your body image issues are worse that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> hey, TJ, why does it look like you're jerking off, bro? The untold story time, of the deep. Like you're, you're jerking yourself off. And why did it fa why did it pick up pace when you started talking? Does is, does the voice of his does, does the sound of his does the, does the voice, voice of his own sound does the voice of his own sound ejaculate his weeder that hard? Yes. <laughs>
Asshole. Okay. Right. Want to make it clear? Make it 100% fucking clear. Uh -huh. Are there people who have gender dysphoria and they decide I am going to transition to deal with my gender dysphoria and then they do it and then they're like, nope, I, this either didn't work or I regret this in some way and now I would like to transition back. Do those people exist? Fucking absolutely. Sure, 100%. No denying that they exist. Most of them don't decide that because transitioning didn't work for them, that they now want to turn on the entire trans community, trans movement, whatever. Most of them don't do that. Most people who detransition remain pro-trans, trans allies, etc. Source for that, please. Because it sounds like you're kind of just pulling that out of your ass. I haven't seen data one way or the other on that, and we probably won't have that data for another few years because no one's really asking that question in mass yet. People are kind of just focusing on the whole saving the kids right now thing. So let's talk about the extent to which this detransitioning stuff even happens. Okay? Let me give you some statistics, okay? So in the UK, a survey of uh, 3,000... That's a very reliable source. GenderGP.com. Sounds totally reliable and unbiased. Oh, yeah. 398 attendees of a gender identity clinic found that just 16, about 0.47%, experienced transition-related regret. Of these, even fewer went on to actually detransition okay. and become detransitioners. In the U.S., a survey of nearly 28,000 people found that 8% of respondents reported some kind of detransition. Of this 8%, 62% uh, only did so temporarily due to societal, financial, or family pressures. In Sweden, a 50-year longitudinal study on a cohort of 767 transgender people found that around 2% of participants expressed regret following gender-affirming surgery, although it is unclear how many of these participants were uh, detransitioning uh, as a consequence. In, the In Sweden, a 50-year longitudinal study. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what's wrong with that one right there. The study took place over 50 years. You know what that means? Every single person in that study is from an era when you had to get like multiple years of therapy to get the green light on these procedures. You had to go through doctor after doctor and have family members sign off. And depending on the country, it was virtually impossible to get the treatments. And once you finally did, you'd literally been meditating on the decision whether or not to get these surgeries for like half a decade at least. That's the difference between that study finding that only 2% of people regret it and trying to use that statistic now for kids that are being rushed into it by a social media pipeline and, and peer pressure. You're comparing apples to cinder blocks. I'm not gonna put up with that BS. Netherlands, a study of transgender young people found that only 1.9% of young people on puberty blockers did not want to continue with medical transition. So on average, 97% of people who are transgender are happy with their decision to transition. Only 3% of trans people experience some form of regret, but may not detransition. The main reason cited for detransition is social pressure. In other words, not because they really want to detransition, but just... This, okay, this is how I know this site is just making stuff up. The main reason cited for detransition is social pressure. According to who? Where did you get that from? At this point, I have to assume everything on this website is a straight up lie because that's a lie. I have never heard a detransitioner, and I've listened to interviews with many of them, say... That social pressure is why they detransitioned. In fact, the exact opposite. Social pressure is why they had their tits stopped off in the first place. I've never seen a single study that says social pressure is what makes them detransition. 
receipts, please. It's because they can't handle the backlash of transitioning. They can't handle the way people look at them. The way Bro, that is citing a study that I have literally sent you before. That, uh, that we also found to be complete horseshit. I don't remember what that study looked like. I can't remember. But again, just because it... Oh, I have this study. Okay. Let's look at the methodology. Let's look at the sample size. Let's look at who was paid to conduct it and what their financial motives are. Like, I have a study doesn't mean it's good information. We've been over this as well, and people should know this. You can pay anyone to lie and find a result you want them to find, in case that wasn't obvious. They don't feel safe in public, the way their friends and family now treat them. And so that is the reason why they start to detransition, because maybe it makes their gender dysphoria feel better, but it makes their life worse in pretty much every other way, not because of something they've done, Okay, that's fair, Gorp. So they're not making it up. So they're cherry-picking studies. Just as bad. But because of... Well, some... I don't know, maybe not just as bad. One is an outright lie, and one is cherry-picking information to suit your narrative. Which is kind of the same. Ah, I'd... Lie by omission, so lie. Yeah. Something other people have done to them. Recent research by Dr. Jack Turbin has found that around 90% of people who... Re First of all, you win. Anecdotal evidence. Second-hand anecdotal evidence at that. So, sorry. Not exactly winning any arguments with that one. Second of all, the whole they're bullied into suicide thing doesn't really hold water when their suicide rate is climbing and they have more social acceptance now than at any other point in history. So, sorry, I don't think your friend killed themselves because they were bullied at work. They killed themselves because gender dysphoria is a mind-fracturing identity disorder that rends your psyche asunder, to put it poetically. Turn to their birth gender in the US, don't do so because of regret or dissatisfaction, but because of pressure from family, school, work, or society in general. The National Center for Transgender Equality found that the most common reasons for detransitioning were a lack of support at home, problems in the workplace, harassment, or discrimination. Anyway, so yep, exactly here's some detransition uh, statistics. Um, this is a survey of 27,715 respondents. Uh, trans equality provided a helpful breakdown that gives us some more insight into the most prevalent reasons why that led people to detransition. Pressure from parents, 36%. Difficulty of transitioning, 33%. Harassment and discrimination, 31%. Employment issues, 29%. Family pressure, 26%. Relationship pressure, 18%. Peer pressure, 17%. Pressure from a mental health professional, 5%. Pressure from religious counselors, 5%. Gender transition was not right for them, 5%. Transition didn't reflect the complexity of their gender identity. 4%. Financial reasons, 3%. Medical reasons, 2%. So TJ is looking at trans, so listening to the foxes, why the hens are dead. <laughs> yeah, kind of. So, in light of those What video did you send in, Alifat? In light of the true story of what detransitioning is and why people do it, this Prager U thing is just a horribly propagandistic piece of shit. Now okay. All right, Amazing Atheist. Do you want to talk statistics? Let's talk about statistics really quick. Hang on. Let me go find it. The hidden danger of gender-affirming care. 55% of people that have these surgeries have extreme medical complications up to and including death. Long-term follow-up of transsexual persons undergoing reassignment surgery cohort study. Let's see. If I remember correctly, overall mortality for sex reassigned persons was higher during follow-up. Higher. And 87% of kids that have gender dysphoria in early adolescence grow out of it. So, 87% of the kids that have dysphoria will naturally grow out of it. Half, over half, about 55% of the ones that go on to get the procedures have extremely dangerous medical complications up to and including death. 
and the suicide rate is worse after transition, according to studies that weren't bought and paid for by the trans industrial lobby. So if you want to talk about statistics, frankly, it doesn't matter about the rate of regret of transition. Let's talk about the real world verifiable impact that, can you deal with that please? Let's talk about the real world verifiable impact, the damage to lives being done, the people that are dying because of this movement. Oh, they don't regret it, so it's fine. I don't care if they don't regret it. They're being butchered. And if they don't and if they really don't regret their transition, why does the suicide rate increase? So there's some there's some stats for you, amazing atheist. Seems how you want to pretend to care about those kinds of things. Now, if these people <laughs> that are featured in this documentary have stories to tell, then uh, by all means, I have no problem in listening to their story. Even if their story is not the typical story. I'm not saying that their story and their life and their experience doesn't have value, but doesn't it not make sense to spotlight just those people and not also shine a spotlight on the way more people? who either only detransitioned because family pressure and work pressure and societal pressure, wouldn't it make sense to also show those people, let their story be heard? Or, I don't know, maybe also spotlight the... Who is stopping them? Also, this side picks this thing this, they, that they want to spotlight. The other side comments on it. The other side highlights the thing they want to highlight. The conversation happens. That's how it's supposed to work. Why aren't they talking about all these other things? Because they don't want to talk about those other things. This is always such a strange argument from the left. Why aren't they including all the other things when they talk about this? Because you can't always be talking about everything else, you absolute imbeciles. Story of the 97% of trans people who have fucking zero regrets in transitioning? Yeah, thank you, Z thank you, thank you, Z. Who's stopping them and why would we care? Exactly, thank you. Despite the fact that it's socially deleterious, despite the fact that their family probably, in many instances, has turned on them to some extent, that they've probably lost friends, they've probably lost out on opportunities because of it, even with, even in light of all that, they still stand by their decision to transition. Shouldn't that 97% also, I don't know, get something of a fucking spotlight? Just as a little bit of maybe counterbalance. So that's why stuff. Oh yeah, because every major corporation flying the pride flag for a whole month, the entire media industrial complex, Hollywood, the music industry, every major corporation in every Western country, that doesn't offer adequate counterbalance to PragerU's one movie. No, of course not. PragerU needs to shoot themselves in the foot because the entire rest of the culture hasn't adequately counterbalanced them. You make me sick. You absolute bloviating blowhard. Stuff like this uh, trailer and this film, the film that it is a trailer for, are just so <laughs> lighthouse we're finishing the video miserably okay. desperately sickeningly dishonest and if you disagree with me you don't you don't disagree based on facts you don't disagree based on evidence you don't disagree based on any sort of science oh i don't disagree based on evidence or science huh? okay well to use your own logic against you sir why don't you talk about the stats that i just offered why don't people on your side of the fence ever talk about the scientific studies that show that transitioning is a horrible idea? You want us, you want PragerU to show the other side of the argument, to show the whole spectrum of the conversation, and yet you turn around and completely exclude any evidence that counters your very narrow worldview. Do I see hypocrisy? Do I see narcissistic projection? 
Do I see rampant stupidity? Yes. Yes, I do. ...or empirical reality. You disagree based on feelings. <coughs> and facts don't care about your feelings, bitch. <sighs> I love how he tries to, to, to win with the little, with the little shenane snap. Amazing atheist, you are a... You are a political partisan hack yes. who is everything wrong with modern political discourse. The, the world is worse off for having to tolerate your insufferable existence. I award you no points and may God have mercy on your soul. This has been Adventurous Politics. We'll see you on the next one.